is Andy Motika, and I am the director of music for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, as well as for the Cathedral of Saints Peter and Paul in Indianapolis. And I'm here today to talk about Father Clarence Rivers, an inspirational figure in black church history, as well as all of American church history. Father Rivers was born in Selma, Alabama in 1931. And when he was about 10 years old, he and his family moved to Cincinnati. Shortly after that, the whole family converted to Catholicism. And at some point in high school, now Father Rivers felt the call to the priesthood. He was ordained at the age of 32, and he was the first black Catholic ordained in the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. He didn't have a lot of success in his first two parishes. The people kind of rejected him. There was still some significant racism in the area, and he did not fit with those people. They did not welcome him in the way that, that he should have been. In his third parish, however, his pastor, because he was the associate pastor, Father Rivers was encouraged to start to use his other talents to enculturate, incorporate black culture into uh, the parish life. He did this by using his musicianship, which is particularly inspirational to me. Father Rivers started to write what he called an American Mass program. An American Mass program was both a collection of music and a recording that was released in 1963. And it was a collection of music that blended together the style of black spirituals with Gregorian chant, which seems like a strange mesh, but he did it fantastically. You have to remember that this was a time of pretty significant liturgical upheaval in the United States. The Constitution on the Sacred Liturgy was just released in 1963, and the whole church was anticipating and trying to figure out just what Mass was going to look like following Vatican II. Vatican II was still going on at this time. He eventually, the next year in 1964, was invited to lead music for the National Liturgical Conference in St. Louis, and he was one of the music leaders for the very first High Mass in English in the United States. And for communion for that Mass, they sang his newly composed piece, God is Love, which became a national sensation of liturgical music. Throughout the decades following, Father Rivers became a liturgist, a composer, uh, a speaker, a thinker, a leader in both liturgy and in music across the country, and a very well-respected uh, figure when it came to the new mass and especially enculturation in the new mass. Father Rivers is so inspiring to me as a musician and as a liturgical musician especially because he found such a great way of bringing in both the church's tradition of music and the liturgy and also blending that with his cultural experience and speaking in a language that his parishioners and that many other people around the cult country could appreciate, could understand, and could engage with. The other thing I like about him, especially compared to composers at his time, is that so much of his work is biblical. There are a lot of composers from that time that were writing in a more contemporary style or trying to write for the new mass that did not do as good a job at incorporating scripture into their works. Father Clarence Rivers had a great ear for scripture, a great knowledge of scripture, and incorporated that into his works in a fantastic way, and really was a trailblazer there for in all composers to move forward with the new mass and to incorporate both the traditions of the Catholic Church with his local culture. And for that reason, I am grateful for his work.